right, good morning everyone. Um, happy Friday. And we'll go ahead and get started with today's webinar on the new low height skidding system. My name is Tasha Weston. I'm a marketing specialist. Um, and I will be hosting today with Barris, who is the America's sales leader for heavy lifting technology. So for today's agenda, we'll do a brief introduction. Then we'll do a product overview of the low height series discuss some of the markets and applications. Then we'll dive a little bit deeper into the technical details, wrap it up with some marketing and sales support, and then answer any of your questions. So um, since everyone will be muted during the call, if you have any questions throughout the presentation, please feel free to enter them into the chat pane and send them to me. Um, and then we will address them at, at the end. So for a brief introduction, um, Enterpack is the global market leader in high pressure hydraulic tools, controlled force products, and solutions for positioning of heavy loads when precision is especially needed. Um, and sometimes we know that our standard product line can't um, cover everything. So for your specific applications, we also specialize in custom products and solutions to meet our customers' unique needs. So as you know, we have uh, different options for distributor training. We have uh, training webinars such as today's. We also offer academy service and sales training um, at Columbus, so through our Enter Enterpack Academy. We also do on-site product training, so we will come to you. And then also we now have our bolting vans available as well. So we'll go ahead and dive into the new low height skidding system. So first off, why use the skidding system? The big issue um, often with obviously moving heavy loads is safety. So skidding systems are stable and they're controlled horizontal move. The load will never be freely suspended, so it's a lot safer for the team. On top of that, only one operator is needed. So you can see um, in the picture below, only one is needed and he is at a safe distance away from the load. Besides that, skidding systems compared to cranes can get into spaces um, that have limited area to move around. Um, so it's an ideal solution for space constraints. On top of that, we created this low height system just to get into even tighter spaces, um, just to optimize where you can get the product into. We also created our system with a modular design in mind to adapt to any project. So you can purchase as many or as little skid tracks as you need. Customizations are also available if you don't um, if the customer doesn't want to go off of the standard product line. And lastly, it's compact for easy storage and portability, but it still is able to offer that high capacity to do those big moves. To go a little bit into the overview of the products, so the system is comprised of a series of skid beams um, that are moved by hydraulic push-pull cylinders while traveling on top of a skid track. So the skid track has PTFE coated pads to reduce friction and help with the move. You can see below the black is the skid track with the silver Teflon pads on top. And then the skid beam is the yellow components that is then powered by the push-pull unit, um, which is connected to our split flow pump that has pendant control. So what's a little bit different about our system is that we offer a two-in-one design for our skid track. So the skid track below is obviously low height to get into those tight spaces. But if you want to be able to span gaps or go onto surfaces that aren't fully supported, we also have our support track. So you just put that beneath the skid track, um, and you're able to use the two together to span those gaps. Um, so it's great. Customers don't have to buy two systems, um, one for kind of more of a heavy duty skidding application and one for low profile. Now they have two-in-one. So now I will pass it on to Mike, and he will talk a little bit about the markets and applications. Thanks, Tasha. So when, when we're talking about skidding systems, the primary customers are going to be in your, in your heavy industries. So we call them the dirty smokestacks, right? The uh, power gen, uh, oil and gas, your industrial manufacturers. Um, but they also get into civil construction. So um, anytime you have a, a large uh, piece that you need to move slide laterally, a skidding system can be an option. And it, you know, a lot of times it, it maybe is going to replace things like rollers 
um, or or other uh, homemade type skidding systems that might be out there. And again, the the features are going to be that uh, that portability and um, kind of predictability of of how the load will move. Um, typical customers are going to be the the heavy legging rigging and uh, lifting contractors. Um, but you've also got um, your transportation guys, so guys that are actually picking up um, and transporting transformers or presses or other big pieces of machinery, um, and then those construction companies. We've seen uh, some, some people, because of the ease of use of this type of equipment, uh, some of the manufacturers are also looking at having, having and purchasing this equipment themselves versus hiring an outside contractor to do this work. So. You know, we're kind of opening up some space with, with the ease of use of this for, for customers to do it themselves. Uh, can you change the slide? Yep, great. So when we look at, uh, these are a couple of application photos. The transformer example is, is a really common one. Um, this is kind of a test setup showing a, a smaller transformer. Um, Tasha had talked about the, the support track for the, the skid system you can see. The support track is being used in that upper left photo, um, so the, it's able to span quite a large gap. And we have a load chart for that that, that kind of explains what kind of gaps you can, you can span. Um, you can see some of the other skidding applications. You've got that uh, topside module for an oil and gas application. You've got the, a whole bridge that's being moved in the uh, lower right-hand corner. So those are, it's always going to be something that, that's big and heavy. Um, and it makes sense to move it from underneath versus trying to put a large gantry or, or train over top of it. Uh, getting into some of the technical details, when we look at the, the skid system itself, we, we rate it as a 400 ton system. So what that means is that each of the, the slide rails is, is capable of, of handling 200 tons. We're going to have two of those slide rails underneath the system. So that becomes a 400-ton system. Um, when we look at it, you've got uh, your major components there. Um, all of these kind of drawings are available from us to take a look at. But the key things you want to kind of zero in on are the height. So if we look at the height of the skid track, um, at uh, it's just at about four inches high, so just a little bit under there. So very, very low. Um, and then the um, the length of the skid tracks and kind of weights when you when you look at it. The idea was to have things be able to be set by people, so you'll see a certain amount of handles on pieces that, that kind of indicates, uh, you know, you might need four hands to kind of uh, get this thing moved into place. It might be at 200 pounds, 100 pounds, that kind of thing. So um, very portable, but able to handle the load. Um, the, the how it works is really um, setting up a low friction surface, like Tasha said, and then we have that hydraulic cylinder that's, that's uh, creating your force. So if we're going to put 200 tons on on that uh, the uh, skid beam in the uh, in the dead load, we're going to have to have at least 20 tons of pushing force to kind of uh, move that based on having 10% of that being the, the sliding friction. So, uh, next slide. So 400 tons, we're going to move it in in increments, and the increments are based on the spacing that the, uh, the push-pull unit dogs into the sides of the track. So that's in that uh, uh, 20, 20 to 24-inch range. Um, so we've got a little bit more stroke on the cylinder to, to be able to do that. Your height, again, is that a uh, little bit under 4 inches. And your width is going to be what, what we use to uh, spread out the load over the, over the ground, so about 18 inches wide. <clears throat> um, we do offer it in a kit. So you know, for, for customers that are trying to get into skidding but aren't really sure what they might need, they can go ahead and, and order uh, what we call the 400 starter kit, right? So LH400 FKJ would be the part number. And if they order that part number, it's going to include 10 pieces of the skid track. It's going to include the four um, skid beams. It's going to include the two push-pull units, hoses to run it, um, a split flow pump, so this is a two-point split flow pump with manual valves, and that's going to uh, make sure that the push-pull units are going to, in effect, synchronize to each other um, without electronics or anything like that, so a very straightforward synchronization system. 
and then uh, it comes with a cart and a transport frame. So it's a nice package to um, go ahead and start moving 400 tons. Um, here's some detailed look at the components. So <clears throat> like Tasha had, Tasha had said earlier, we've got the push-pull unit, and that's in a sense a longer stroke 25-ton cylinder. So you know, you're, when you look at our normal RC cylinders, it's a version of that, a custom version of that with a longer stroke. Um, that, I'm sorry, it's a double-acting version, 23.5 um, inches of, of stroke, and it's going to weigh 225 pounds. The, the pieces of track themselves, um, they're going to be 148 pounds. They bolt together very simply, and they, they have those PTFE skid pads on them so that they create that low friction surface. Um, and then the skid beams, those are, those are an A and a B skid beam. Um, the reason for having a difference between the two skid beams is that one of them is going to connect to the cylinder, and the other one disconnects to the other skid beam. So, we didn't want to have a very, very long uh, skid beam as a starter, just so that it was small enough to, to be able to move around with the handles that are provided. Um, and that does have a stainless steel surface underneath it. So the combination of that stainless on the PTFE is what creates that low friction sliding surface. Um, track support is, isn't part of that uh, starter kit, but that's the, that's the piece that lets you span a gap. So if you don't have the luxury of having a, a floor where you can run this track out on and, and be fully supported, but maybe you have to run up on cribbing, and we'll show some examples of that, um, then, then you're going to need to have some kind of support track. We, we provide one, or we, we can sell one. Um, you know, if a customer's clever, they can maybe come up with their own, their own ways to do this as well. Um, in the starter kit, like I said, we do offer that SFP 213MJ. So that's the, the two-point split flow pump. That's going to give you that skidding speed of 60 feet per hour. Um, a customer might say, well, you know, I like that idea, but maybe I would like to be able to do lifting to get the skid system underneath the piece that I'm moving with the same pump. So they might go to a four-port split flow. Um, they may not like the manual um, valve option. They might want to go with the solenoid valve. So we do offer other other units that work work well with the skid system, um, and these model numbers are shown here below. And then, you know, every good product has to have some accessories, right? So the, uh, the pump cart is something that allows you to move around that split flow pump a little easier. So it's just basically a big wagon, um, and all of the split flow pump models will fit on that. The, the storage frame is something that's, that's pretty cool because, uh, you know, when you have components like this, especially in heavy manufacturing work environments, the, the trick is to make sure that the thing you sell actually ends up being all together and in one place. So this storage and transport frame allows the customer to hold that starter kit, so the 10 tracks, the four skid beams, the two push-pull units, in one place and be able to pick it up with a fork truck and, and uh, get it moved around pretty easily. And then we offer um, things like shim plates and, and uh, timbers. So the, the timbers that we offer are special wood called a Zobi wood. And that's a, um, it's got a very high compress, compression rate on it so that uh, when you stack up cribbing, at, like it's shown in the picture there, it doesn't want to compress or move. It just gives you a nice... Uh, nice service to set up on, and they're also machines so that they, they're actually dimensionally um, very good. So when we say they're going to be uh, 3.94 inches by 3.94 inches, they actually, they actually are. Um, here's an example, um, you know, when we try to explain to customers what, what some of the uses for something like this might be. Um, here's an example of a large transformer probably on the order of three to 400 tons being brought in on a, on a platform trailer. Um, this, this is a very typical type of application where either, you know, this might be a trailer, it might be a train, whatever it is. Um, this large piece of equipment comes in, it would have to be picked up, and then a skid system would get put underneath it. You can see that the skid system is, is uh, going right over to a to a pedestal where they're going to actually put the transformer 
um, it's it's kind of working environment. So um, there's a couple different ways to do this. One would be to have a very, very large crane um, that has a reach or to lift it vertically, get a skid system underneath it, and then slide it over into place. They'd have to then lift it again, take the skid system out, and lower it down to its, to its resting spot. So um, very, very typical setup, whether it's a transformer, whether it's uh, another large piece of machinery. Um, this, is a, this is a pretty common way to, uh, to work with this equipment. And you can see in this example, the setup shows the, the, the track being supported fully on the pedestal. And then when it gets over into the, the gap that we're trying to span, we've got the support track underneath it. Um, and the support track is sitting on some of that cribbing that, uh, um, that uh, is, is being used to fill in that gap between the, the platform trailer that the equipment came on and the pedestal. And um, here's a pretty good uh, view of the, of the skid pad. So there's quite a lot of skid pads in there. Um, from the storage standpoint, the skid pads can be taken off. They can be washed. They can, uh, there's a lot of nice things about having that, that pad be able to come off versus it being a, a painted on sliding surface or, or other ways of, of setting up that low friction. And then now I'll cover the marketing and sales support. <clears throat> um, so to help you with working with the customers, we created a new brochure specifically on the Low Height Series. That is available on the website. Um, you can also order it to be delivered to you as well. We have a version of this PowerPoint that we can send also if you want to share it with your team or with customers. We have an animation in progress. You, those two um, images you just saw are a couple example renderings from that. So we should be expecting that to come out soon. It will just show um, that application being animated. You can see how the cylinder is able to move forward and retract um, and how it's able to move that load. We've also done a press release. We have an example of a custom application we did for Bonneville Power Administration. You can see a screenshot of it below. Um, just to show an example of kind of a challenge a customer had and how we were able to provide a solution for them. So like I said, we can provide this standard low height skidding system as well as customized options depending on the application. So even if you see something up here um, or if you want to see something else that if you need some additional help with marketing this to customers, don't hesitate to reach out and uh, just please let us know what we can do to further help you. So now uh, feel free to unmute your lines, and um, if you have any questions, please let us know. Um, 